Hey guys, Lukman from Revere here. Welcome to another tutorial within the Unreal series where I'll be teaching you guys some cool tips and tricks to help smoothen your workflow. We're going to be creating a click and drag system within Unreal Engine 4 using mouse input. I've not seen this tutorial shown before on YouTube and whilst I was working on it for a project, I thought I'd show you guys. So without further ado, let's get started. Here we are in the editor. I have a scene set up already, you might have seen it in the previous tutorial. I have the pawn that we're going to be creating set up already so you can see the final result. Let's click simulate. We can click around in any direction. The mouse icon even changes depending on if it's clicked or not. There's a limit set as well so you can't look up or down past a certain point. But you can still turn a full 360. Let's exit out of here and create a new pawn. So right click in your content browser and select blueprints class and then select pawn. You can name yours wherever you want. I'm just going to call it click and drag. I'm going to delete my current pawn and open up a new one. Just going to drag this here to make things neater. So in our viewport, we're going to be creating three elements, a spring arm with a camera attached and a sphere collision. Click on add component type in spring arm and hit enter. Just need to change a few values on the right. If you don't have do collision test enable, just go ahead and click that. Then change the target arm length to five. We go to add component, type in camera and hit enter. We don't need to change any properties. So click on add component again and add a sphere collision. Go down the details panel and change the collision type to block all. Hit compile and let's get into our event graph to add some logic. Delete the node in the middle, we'll keep the event begin and tick as we'll need them later. Just space the two out a little bit. Okay, so in this blueprint, we're going to be doing three things. Adding the movement for our mouse axis and input, setting the Y axis limit for our camera, and setting the collision so our mouse can't interact with the environment whilst the left mouse button is pressed. First, let's add the movement. We're going to get three input values here. So right click and type in mouse X and do the same. But now we want the input mouse Y. We'll need the left mouse button too. Drag off and type in branch. From the true value, drag off and type in add actor world rotation. Next, we're going to be creating two variables. So click on the plus icon and when it creates a new boolean, name it hold. Add another variable and call this rotation speed. Make sure it's a float. Hit compile so we can edit it, edit its value. And put the value to something low like five. From the axis value, drag off and get a float times float node. Drag the rotation speed into the other value pane. Drag from here and get another float times float node. Change the value to minus one and from the other end drag off and type in make rotator. Make sure it's, that it's going into the Z pin. Plug the return value into the delta rotation and set the condition of the branch as the boolean we made earlier. Next we want to do the same thing before the Y input. Highlight these nodes, press Ctrl and C to copy, then Ctrl and V to paste. Align the nodes and plug the branch input into the Y input. Take the axis value and plug it into here. Get the rotation for this value like this. Let's connect the Z pin and plug it into the Y pin instead. 
delete the world rotation node. Instead, we want to get the add active local rotation node. Okay, so that part's done. Next, we're going to be adding the left mouse button input. So first, right click and type in player controller and hit enter. From the return value, drag out and type in set current mouse cursor and hit enter. Plug it into the pressed pin. Copy and paste this node and plug it into the released pin. Set the target to the player controller. And for the top cursor, set it to grab hand closed. And for the bottom, set it to grab hand. Drag out and type in set hold, but make sure to leave it unchecked. From here, drag out and get a delay node. Set the value to something low like 0.15. From there, get branch. From the player controller, drag out and type in is input key down. Put the return value into the branch and the key node into our left mouse button. From the true pin, type in set hold, but check it to true. Zoom out and just add a comment box. Call it camera rotation. Compile and let's go back into our editor. Okay, so let's test what we have so far. Before you do anything, click on your pawn and set the auto possess value to player zero so we can control our pawn. Hit simulate and you can see it works. But because we have no limit set, you can rotate all the way around and obviously we don't want that. So let's go ahead and change that. Drag the event tick further down. Create a custom event and name it camera limit. Let's create some variables for our function. Add a new variable and call it y limit min. Duplicate it and rename it y limit max. Add a new variable, turn it into a boolean and name it rotation y limit. Drag out from here and get a branch. From the true value, get another branch. Then from there, type in set actor rotation. Get the rotation y limit and set it to the branches condition. Click on the node and take it to true. Type in get actor rotation. And from the return value, get break rotator so we can change the values. From the Y pin, drag out and get the float less than float node and the float more than float node. Set the y min float to the min less than node and the y max float to the more than node. Drag out and type in or to get the or boolean. Connect the pins as such and set it to the condition of the second branch we created earlier.
Next, drag out from here and type in select flow. Then plug the two values into the min and max nodes. From the return value, get a make rotator. But make sure it's plugged into the Y value and set the Z value same as the break rotator value because we don't want to change that. Put the return value into the new rotation pin. Zoom out, put a comment box on these nodes and call it camera limit. Now we need to call our event from our event tick. Drag off and type in camera limit and you can see we can call our custom function. That's it, I'm gonna call this ticks. Also one more thing, we need to set the values for y limit min and max. I'm going to set the min at minus 70 and the max at 50. You can set these two values to your preference. Click play and you can see when we drag up and down, we can't go past a certain point, which is exactly what we want. So that's a success. Now, if you want to have other clickable elements in your project, you might accidentally click on another event whilst trying to rotate. So let's fix that. Back in our event graph, where we have our event begin, we need to get our sphere collision. Set the collision enabled, but make sure it has no collision selected and just plug that in. Comment and call it collision start. Over in the camera rotation, we're going to set the logic here. When the left mouse button is pressed, the Sophia collision will be enabled to block all and when it's released, there will be no collision. Get the sphere and set the collision enabled to true. Plug it into this node. Copy these two across. And set the collision to no collision and plug it in. And that's it, that's all the setup we need. You guys can change the values of the limits to your preference and set the mouse icons to wherever you want. So that's it for this video guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or queries on anything I covered in this video, please leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Also, if you have any ideas on what we can do for a future video or something you'd like to see, please leave that down below too, and it could be a future video. Well, this is Dukman from Revere. Thank you for watching.